Welcome back to Algebra 1. We're talking about Chapter 3.2, How to Solve Equations in that book. But you don't have to have that book to see how to do it. But if you have the book, follow along. All right, so last time in 3.1, we talked about how you solve for x is you make sure it's an equation that has an equal sign. Then you ask yourself, why is x not alone? And you do the opposite until it is alone. Now, sometimes, we talked about last time, um, that we, instead we have to make it not so ugly. So sometimes we'll say first, why is it ugly? Then why is x not alone? And the other thing is, we said that as long as x doesn't have any squared or any exponents on it, and we graph this thing, it would make a line, so these are called linear equations. Another thing you might have noticed, all of mine are x's. Um, I'm dyslexic. I used to say I was slightly dyslexic, and then on Facebook, I saw this thing that said you are dyslexic if you have four of these characteristics. I had 30. I didn't realize all these other things were part of my dyslexia. Like, I had a real hard time learning my left and right hands and stuff like that. So, X's look the same if you flip them, turn them upside down, it doesn't matter. So, I like X's and I change them to X's. So, if you need to do that, feel free. But, you know, X is a good letter. Why, why, why mess with the classic? Alright, so here's our first problem. Why is X not alone? Well, it's got a negative 4 sitting next to it. If a number is sitting next to a letter in algebra, it means they're being multiplied. So it's being multiplied by negative 4. What do you think the opposite of multiplying by negative 4 is? Dividing by negative 4. So how we show division is the fraction bar. We're going to divide by negative 4. And what we do to one side, we do to the other. We cross those out. We don't want to, we want them to go away, so we cross them out because negative 4 divided by negative 4 is 1, and then we don't want to write that one there because it'll just confuse things. It's going to become an understood one. So this looks weird, but it's x equals negative 1 fourth, and it doesn't really matter that the negative was written on the bottom or the top or out front. You can write it wherever. All right, how about this one? It looks fancy because it's got a fraction. So, why is x not alone? It's being divided by 5. So what's the opposite of divided by 5? Multiplied by 5. So I'm going to put it in parentheses up here. And what we do to one side, we do to the other. These cancel out. If you have the same thing in the numerator and denominator of a fraction, you get to mark them out, which I think is fun. To me, it's like popping bubble wrap. There's something satisfying deeply about marking out math. So, to me, that's just fun. Okay, we bring down what we didn't mess with. That x is in the numerator, so it's in numerator land. x equals, and third, negative 30 times 5 is negative 150. Boop, boop, boop. Put a box around it, and it's more fun with sound effects. All right, how about this one? Well, x is being multiplied by a negative 2 thirds. And if you remember, your sixth grade math, the opposite of multiplying by a fraction is dividing by a fraction. And to divide a fraction, you flip it and multiply. But students seem to get that wrong. They seem to get confused. So I found a better way to look at this is that two things are happening to this x. It's being divided by a 3 because the 3 is in denominator land, which means divide. And it's being multiplied by a 2 because it's in numerator land, which means multiply. And it's a fraction, so it's ugly. So we're going to get rid of it because whenever we do these problems, it's always easier if you get rid of what's ugly. And we can get rid of what's ugly by doing the opposite. And what's making our fraction is that 3. And the opposite of dividing by 3 is multiplied by 3. So I'm going to multiply both sides by 3. What you do to one side, you do to the other. These 3's mark out. 3 times 10 is 30. Bring down what I didn't mess with. That 2 is in numerator land. X is in numerator land. I can write them like that. Now, this is easier. Y is X not alone. It's being multiplied by negative 2. So the opposite is divide by negative 2. What I do to one side, I do to the other. Those cancel out. 
x equals negative 15. Whoop, whoop, whoop. More fun with sound effects. That was a pretty hard one. You did good hanging in there. Okay, here's an easier one. Y is x all alone. It's being divided by 2. So what's the opposite? Multiply by 2. What I do to one side, I do to the other. Those cancel out. That's fun. Now, bring that y I didn't mess with. X equals 3 times 2 is 6. Put a box around your answer. Okay, let's try this one. Y is x not alone. It's being multiplied by 4. What's the opposite? Divide by 4. What I do to one side, I do to the other. These cancel out. That's kind of bad. 12 divided by 4 is... Dun, dun, dun. 3. Yay! This isn't terrible, is it? You're kind of thinking it's a little bit fun even. I know you are. Math is fun. See you next time.